I'm Neil from the Starling Tribune, a proud member of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the one you're listening to now. The opinions expressed are those of the individual host. Check out all the other great podcasts at gunnageek.com and get ready because geekiness begins in three, two, one. Hello and welcome to episode 30 of Nerd Alert News. I'm Chris Farrell. I'll be your host for this adventure today. It's hard to keep on top of all the nerdy news that floods the internet, but that's where this show comes in. I'm going to do all the hard work. I'm going to find all those cool stories that you need to know. And I'll tell you what, guys, it's been a pretty good week for news. We got some more trailers on top of the Rogue One trailer we talked about last week. It's been good. I I don't even know where to start. I guess to begin with, we got to start with the headlines. The first story comes from Newsrama.com, and there's some more information on James Cameron's Avatar sequels. I'm sure you guys have all heard this before. He's going to make more movies. Well, James Cameron gave us a little more news. Writer-director James Cameron has expanded his vision for the future of Avatar from three sequels to four. He was a surprise guest at 20th Century Fox's CinemaCon panel, and he announced that the sequels would be released annually, beginning with the second Avatar on December 28th. Yes, December 28th, 2016, supposedly. So, if you believe this, we are only eight months away from an Avatar sequel. Reports are that Cameron is working with, quote, a team of top four top screenwriters, end quote, for the sequels, and each standalone will come together to create a saga. So, another series of Avatar movies is coming. It's it's the white herring we've had forever. This keeps getting promised and promised. It keeps sliding further and further right because of things like technical limitations or... He's not quite ready yet, or he's interested in other things. I'm going to be the cynic here and say, I don't know that we're ever going to see any more Avatar sequels. And to be honest, I'm not really sure I care that much to see any more Avatar sequels. And and bear with me, there's some people that probably really love the Avatar movies, and they're probably really mad at me right now, but here's kind of the reason why. If you think about pop culture, people have kind of forgotten about Avatar. When's the last time you heard someone make an Avatar reference? Avatar came out of the gate... It made boatloads of money. It was innovative at its time. It's what ushered on this age of 3D movies in the cinema. It's why you see every movie being like, oh, pay the extra $3 to see 3D. And you know what? With Avatar, it was totally worth it. James Cameron had a great vision for 3D. It worked. But that's what everyone remembers about Avatar. They don't remember the Navi. They don't remember, what was the main character's name? Sully? See, that's how bad it is. I don't remember. I remember there was a bunch of robots that marched in and the blue creatures fought them off, things like that. And I'm saying this without having looked up anything beforehand because I honestly don't remember much about Avatar. I remember walking out and going, oh my god, the special effects, they're fantastic. That was such an interesting spectacle to witness. And it's never quite matched up anywhere else. You've never had quite the same 3D spectacle as what you got in Avatar. And that's what I remember it for. And I don't care about Avatar 2, 3, 4, and 5 potentially whatever, it's no big deal to me because I don't remember anything from the very first Avatar. And it sounds terrible to say that, but stop back and think, unless you're an Avatar super fan, what is it you remember from that film aside from the awesome 3D effects? I would love to see James Cameron put out some more movies out there, but I don't know that I necessarily want them to be Avatar movies because like I said, I don't care. I'd rather see the next original creation from James Cameron. He has an incredible, incredible imagination. He comes up with great ideas. Let's get more new ideas instead of going back to a universe that, quite frankly, I don't remember much from. And I'm probably not going to go and see an Avatar 2 in theaters because the spectacle is the 3D. And I'm tired of 3D and the 3D upcharges. But maybe that's just me. If you have a different opinion on Avatar 2, 3, 4, 5 or any of those, why don't you let me know? Contact the show or contact me. You can tweet directly to at NerdAlertShow or at the Chris Farrell. Let me know what you think about this. Maybe I'm completely off base, or maybe you agree with me and I'm completely on base, and you're just completely over the whole Avatar thing like I am. I don't know. I kind of harped on a little too much. I'm not anti-Avatar, I swear, guys. I just don't care about more Avatar stuff going forward. I want more original new ideas like what Avatar was when it came out. Don't make a sequel. That's all I'm saying. Because it's probably not going to do well. Probably not going to do well. But let's move on to the next story. 
So for the second story, Warner Brothers has confirmed that Ben Affleck is directing a solo Batman movie. This comes courtesy of the AV Club. So we all know Warner Brothers is definitely going to be making a standalone Batman movie. It's going to be starring Ben Affleck. But Warner Brothers CEO Kevin, I cannot say his last name very well, I'll try, Sujihara, officially confirmed the long-rumored project to the audience at CinemaCon, and he specifically referred to Affleck as the film's director. However, he didn't say anything about Affleck writing the movie as well. That's a rumor that came out the end of March that supposedly Ben Affleck had already written the script for a Batman movie that would be starring him as the Dark Knight. Supposedly involved what he called, quote, a really cool idea, but we haven't seen anything on that, and it was not confirmed at CinemaCon. The release date for the Batman solo movie has not yet been announced, but you can be sure it's probably going to be sometime within the next five years that Warner Brothers wants to roll this out. If you want my personal guess, probably either right before or right after Justice League, because how do you get people hyped up? You roll out Batman. We all know Batman v Superman has had a a mixed reaction, let's put it that way. But one thing people have universally liked, which surprised some folks, is Ben Affleck. Critics and fans alike have both been united in the fact that they like the Batfleck, that is Ben Affleck as Batman. That's one of the things that was done right in Batman v Superman, according to everyone. There are some people that hated lots of things, but it seems universally across the board, Ben Affleck's portrayal of the Dark Knight was well done and enjoyed. So, make the movie come out sooner, and we all know Batman v Superman, the money's not quite shaping up to what they want it to be. I bet you it will with this Batman movie, because been proven batman movies do well and ben affleck very talented director and his portrayal of batman pretty daggum good so i like this combination i can't wait to see when this comes out what will be really interesting is to see what marvel movies this releases around because if i'm dc right now the marvel behemoth is running and i don't know that i'd want to put this up against like an avengers 3 or an avengers 3.5 second part of infinity war I'm DC, I'm a little more comfortable going up against like Ant-Man and the Wasp or something like that. But like I said, we're still potentially years away from even getting a release date on this movie. But when we do get that release date, someone remind me to go back and look and see what Marvel movies release around it. Because that is going to be the cool thing. But speaking about Marvel movies, let's go into the next story. This comes courtesy of 411mania.com where it's been reported that Star-Lord is in fact going to appear in Avengers Infinity War. Chris Pratt's Star-Lord will be in Avengers Infinity War, according to Joe and Anthony Russo, the directors of the two-part film. They said he'll reprise his role as Peter Quill in the next chapter of the Avengers saga. Here's the catch, though. They didn't say whether he's going to be appearing in Part 1 or Part 2 of Infinity War, because remember, it's a two-part series, Part 1 coming out May 4th, 2018, and Part 2 scheduled for May 3rd, 2019. So we don't know which one he'll appear in, but it looks like Chris Pratt's going to be getting some more Marvel screen time in because remember Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 comes out May 5th, 2017. So potentially if so potentially if he's in both Infinity War movies, you'll have 3 summers of a row of Chris Pratt as Star-Lord. And you know what? Totally okay with that because Chris Pratt's Star-Lord was really well done. Good movie. Let's go back to the question that sparked all of this though. The question was was Chris Pratt's Star-Lord character going to appear in Infinity War? We're going to be getting this question a lot until the first movie comes out. They have established a ton of different characters within the MCU. And remember, the TV series are all part of the MCU as well. So I'm sure as we get closer and closer to Infinity War, set photos will leak out. And people are like, oh my god, this guy's on set. And there'll be interviews with the Russo brothers. Where people ask, oh, is Daredevil going to be in there? Or is, or is this character going to be in there? And there'll be lots of questions asked. I'm sure there's going to be some surprises, though, of some of these heroes that appear. But I, for one, would not be shocked to see the entire Guardians team show up in Avengers Infinity War, in addition to all sorts of characters we have not even been introduced to yet. Because remember, technically we haven't met Black Panther yet. We've seen trailer footage of him, but we'll have a Black Panther by then. We'll have Doctor Strange movie have come out by then. There's going to be a lot of characters to appear in Infinity War. If this is truly the big battle against Thanos, you got to bring in everyone. And it's going to be an incredible spectacle to see on screen. And as we find out more about some of those characters that appear, I can't wait to talk about it. So there's one last headline story this week, and I kind of wanted to go back to last week's topic, the Star Wars Rogue One trailer. We all know lots of excitement, myself, Naki, and Michelle. We were all geeking out about it. We spent about a half hour dissecting it and just generally nerding out on the last episode of the podcast. But we weren't the only ones. 
Comicbook.com has a story about the huge numbers this trailer racked up. So we remember, Rogue One is technically a prequel. It takes place between Episodes 3 and Episode 4. In 29 hours, it racked up almost 30 million hits. 16.3 million views on YouTube, and another 13.2 million views on Facebook. That is absolutely astounding. Those are ridiculous numbers. Ridiculous. Nobody expected that. That kind of hype was expected for Episode 7, for sure, and probably Episode 8 as well. Here's why it's impressive. Rogue One is only about 200,000 shy of the per-hour views that Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens, had. Insanity. There was not anywhere near as amount, the amount of hype put forward into Rogue One, but because of the excitement from Episode 7, that hype has translated itself to Rogue One. I cannot wait to see where they go with this. Rogue One, just the teaser looked great, and I'm super stoked to see that all sorts of other people are almost as excited as I am. I say almost because I can't even measure my level of excitement. So we'll have to revisit later, see how many views it's gotten, say, I don't know, another month from now. But it seems like everything's trending up. People are super excited for it. And it's another great thing Disney's done with that acquisition. People thought, oh, they spent too much money. Evidently not. So before we move on to the featured story, quick reminder, Nerd Alert News is part of the Gunning Geek Network. There's 18 different podcasts on there, all nerdy and geeky related, all sorts of stuff, be it about TV shows and movies, about comics, about just general geekdom in general. In general, I don't know why I looped it like that, but we'll just keep going. So, all sorts of stuff there. I did want to take a moment to hype something on the network. Maybe slightless, shameless self-promotion involved with it too, but I'm a fan of the TV show Arrow. There happens to be an Arrow podcast on the network called The Starling Tribune, hosted by myself, Stargate Pioneer, and Neil. And I wanted to direct you guys to Starling Tribune Season 4 Edition 1159. Viewers of Arrow have been waiting all season to find out who's in the grave, and this week we find out in the episode 1159. The reporters are joined by longtime Gunna Geek blogger Michelle, Michelle Ely in order to take it all in. It's as controversial as comic book TV shows go, and everyone has their own take. The reporters sound off on the show by running down news, articles, and announcements that have dropped in the past and that could impact future episodes. Tune in to hear all your DC comic book screen talk that affects the green Arrow. So, this is a great episode to tune into if you've been watching Arrow, and you're like us, and we're going, Oh my god, who's in the grave? Who's in the grave? It's revealed this week, and opinions are very mixed. And there's a very healthy argument and debate that takes place over it. So if you're interested in the Arrow TV show, head on over to GunnaGeekNetwork.com, click on the Starling Tribune, and listen to the episode entitled 1159. It's a good one. So our featured story this week, we have to talk about Spider-Man. We all know, we saw the trailers, Tom Holland's Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man, is going to appear in Captain America Civil War. We've known for a while that's going to be happening. But what you guys might not have realized is a bunch of early screenings have taken place for Captain America Civil War. People have seen a lot of it, the early reviews are positive, but people are wondering, how much screen time does Spider-Man or Peter Parker get in this movie? Well, Twitter was the answer of how to get this news. Comicbook.com had the article, but they found the answer on Twitter. We do know just how long the web swinger is in the film, according to a tweet from Mike Sampson. In response to a question about how much time Peter had compared to Spider-Man, how much total time he has, he goes, that's about right. Maybe 10 minutes of Parker and a good 20 minutes of Spidey. Here's where this gets really cool. If you guys didn't realize, Tom Holland was cast as Spider-Man near the very end of the production run for Captain America Civil War. People were on set trying to take pictures of a costume and get leaked photos out there. We got nothing. So he gets cast near the end of the movie's production run, and he's in there for a half hour. I mean, I was expecting to get maybe a five-minute glimpse of Spider-Man. He's involved in something, and we're going to set it up for the future. Instead, it seems like Peter plays a featured role in the Civil War movie, much like he did in the comic books. Do I think he's going to do the same things he did in the comics? Absolutely not, but I think we'll see some connections that are very similar. I don't want to spoil in case anyone has not read the comics and doesn't want speculative spoilers for Captain America Civil War, but pretty cool we're getting that much time of Peter Parker and Spider-Man. It's going to be great. It's going to get people really hyped up for a Spider-Man movie, which is why this week Sony and Marvel kind of let the cat out of the bag about the upcoming Spider-Man movie. It's got a title now, and you can find that over at Marvel.com. The Webhead's first solo adventure in the MCU now officially has the title of Spider-Man Homecoming, and it will be swinging into theaters on July 7th, 2017. So, going back to an earlier story, 
if you're a DC, try not to put a movie out about that same time frame because as popular as Ben Affleck's Batman is, this is a Spider-Man that's going to get some exposure in Civil War, get people really jazzed up and be tied into the MCU at large. I think this movie is going to make ridiculous bank. But going back, Sony made this announcement at CinemaCon, giving the title to this upcoming film, directed by John Watts, starring Tom Holland as Peter Parker, and his Aunt May, played by Marissa Tomei. There hasn't been a ton of other casting news. I did see some today as I was setting up the show notes. Things are starting to flesh out, but I think it's really cool. The title is Spider-Man Homecoming, and if you go and look at the official graphic they put out, one of the O's... I believe it's the O in Homecoming, in the coming part of it, has Spider-Man's face as the O, which is just a nice little touch to things you've seen in the comics before. They get it. They get it. Marvel and Sony both like making money. They're working together. I have every expectation that this movie's going to be really good, and I really hope that it is, because if you've seen me do live podcasts and things like that before, hanging off my microphone shock mount, there's a Spider-Man figure. Over my right-hand shoulder, there's almost a six-foot Spider-Man replica. I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, and I just want them to get this right. It looks like it's going to be so good. Granted, we've seen nothing. This is just pure fanboy speculation off of, like, five seconds of Spider-Man in a trailer. So let me bring myself back down to Earth here for a second. Take my fandom hat off. The seeds are laid, or planted, that is, for the Spider-Man movie to be good. I'm sure when we see Civil War, they'll have done right by the character. They'll do what they need to do to get people interested. And then when July 7th, 2017 rolls around... We get the Spider-Man movie, and it's already been teased, even by Kevin Feige, that other Marvel characters could appear because it's part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And if you saw Robert Downey Jr. on Jimmy Kimmel this week for Marvel Week, you heard Jimmy Kimmel ask, well, so Iron Man's in that movie, right? And Robert Downey Jr. kind of gave this look and goes, well, we haven't signed any paperwork yet. The same kind of answer he gave for Civil War, and he's obviously playing a predominant role in that. So, hey, it kind of makes sense. In the Civil War comic, Tony and Peter... Pretty close for a good chunk of it. Who knows? I can't wait to see where they go with it. I want to know what heroes get pulled in to the Spider-Man movie. I just want it now, and i got to wait two years. Or a year. Wow, i got to do math. I'm so excited I forgot how to do math. Whew. But, yeah, July 2017, Spider-Man. I'm going to be starting the countdown as soon as I go see Civil War, probably. Or go see Doctor Strange. Or go see whatever Marvel movie precedes that, because let's be honest... That's what's got me the most excited right now is Marvel movies and Star Wars. But I think I've rambled enough about movies and Spider-Man and Batman and things like that. It's probably time to wrap up the show for this week. If you want more details on any of the stories I've covered in this week's episode of Nerd Alert News, the show notes are all available online for you. They're in the they're in the notes itself on the MP3 file you've downloaded. You can go to nerdalertnews.com and click on the show notes button or just go to shownotes.nerdalertnews.com. That page has the Google Drive folder embedded in it. You can see all of the notes for all the episodes we've done and all of the stories I talk about are in there. So you can go and read that full story for yourself. Please, please, please feel free to rate, review, and subscribe. You can find all that information over at GunnaGeekNetwork.com or at NerdAlertNews.com. Subscriptions and ratings are huge. They're incredibly helpful. A big thank you to those that have rated so far. And if you haven't and you're kind of on the fence, please do it. I would love to get some more ratings get things to show up a little more in iTunes, because right now it says there's not enough ratings for the show's rankings to be featured, or excuse me, ratings to be featured in iTunes. I would love to get those to show up. If you don't want to leave feedback that way, feel free to send me some via email over at nerdalertnews247 at gmail.com, or treat directly to me or the show, or go to Facebook at facebook.com slash nerdalertshow and leave your comments or suggested stories there. Yes, I have gotten some suggestions lately. Cajun Sean is great about sending me stories. It's just there's been so much news right now. There was other stuff I thought I need to cover. I promise, Sean, I'll get to some of those stories you've brought up to me. Or send me some more going forward, and I'll try and squeeze them in. There was just so much Marvel and movie news this week, I couldn't do it. But everyone, I think that is going to wrap up this latest installment of Nerd Alert News. But don't worry, I'll be back real soon with your next Nerd Alert. Bye, guys. You've been listening to Nerd Alert News. For more information, head on over to nerdalertnews.com. The music used in this show is produced by Kevin McLeod and can be found at incompetech.com.